Now, a blast has been reported in Japan at the venue of Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's speech. Reports say that the blast was heard in western city of Wakayama, where Japanese Prime Minister was due to give a speech. Now, according to reports, an apparent smoke bomb had been thrown at the site. Kishida was rushed from the venue after the blast was heard and smoke filled the area. There are no immediate signs of injuries or damage at the scene. A person has been detained following the blast. Prime Minister Kishida has now resumed his campaigning or a lower house by election for which he is in the city. The incident is a big security scare in Japan that comes months after former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot at at a political campaign event. Abe was shot twice while he was giving a speech in the city of Nara in July last year. He later succumbed to his injuries in hospital. Our correspondent Chris Gilbert is now joining us. Chris, good to see you. What more do we know about this incident? What really happened? And do we know anything about the suspect who was arrested and detained? Well, to answer your last question first, uh, it's believed that he was a man in his 20s or 30s. He was quickly detained after the incident, police absolutely pouncing on him, lifting him up, carrying him away. And uh, now he is in a, a local police station being interrogated. And uh, what charges he's going to face, of course, are yet to be seen. But uh, that is about what we know at the moment about the suspect. More details are going to be uh, coming and in the coming hours and the coming days and weeks, of course, when uh, former Prime Minister Abe was shot last year. Details, and including the name of the uh, assassin, uh, were released incredibly quickly, uh, but not so much this time. But what we do know is that he allegedly threw a uh, 20 to 30 uh, centimeter uh, pipe, or uh, it's been described as a cylinder, uh, towards the Prime Minister's stage. Uh, the Prime Minister at this time had not started his speech yet. He was still speaking to a local uh, party candidate who he was campaigning for. Um, it landed apparently about a meter away from the Prime Minister, and uh, it was reported that um, people People, I guess, scattered, fled the area, tried to escape. The Prime Minister left the area as well. And apparently after that, uh, it exploded. Uh, what type of explosion uh, is still being investigated? But it, it sounds like, uh, you know, white smoke uh, rose uh, from the object. Nobody was hurt. The Prime Minister was not hurt. Uh, in fact, as you mentioned, he's already continuing with his schedule, obviously, to, uh, you know, uh, ease fears and anxieties mm -hmm. because those memories of what happened uh, in the same area almost, just nearby in uh, Nada to Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Abe last year, still quite fresh in everybody's memory. Chris, campaigning is currently underway, like you mentioned there, in Japan's nationwide local elections. What measures has the Japanese government put in place in terms of security? I mean, security is an enormous issue. Uh, I mean, guns, uh, for example, uh, very, very rare here. The attack that we saw last year on Prime Minister Abe was a, uh, a homemade weapon. This appears to be a homemade weapon. So over the last nine months, there's been a real focus on the security of these local elections. Uh, the major party, the ruling party, the LDP, Ki uh, Prime Minister Kichita's party, the opposition parties, the coalition parties have all condemned uh, the this attack on what they say is an attack on free speech, uh, an attack again during an election season. Um, you know, that is quite concerning that it's been effectively two elections in a row now where the Prime Minister was giving an open air stump speech for a, a candidate, a, a, a party colleague, and uh, has been effectively attacked or threatened with violence. Uh, so there is going to be further scrutiny of the police response, uh, yet to be seen what the police have to say about how they responded. They have not uh, commented to local media here yet. Um, but the fact that uh, no one was hurt, the Prime Minister was not hurt, uh, may uh, be seen somewhat uh, as a successful uh, you know, uh, operation by them uh, to defend the Prime Minister and the public. Chris, finally, we are talking about Shinzo Abe's incident. It's still fresh in many people's memories. Has there been some improvement in the Prime Minister's security apparatus since Shinzo Abe's incident last year?
Yeah, there have been. There, there's been a, a revision of training, an overhaul of the training about how to protect uh, the candidates in these kinds of campaign settings. Uh, we may hear more in the, uh, the coming hours and days about what exactly the police did in today's situation that was different from last time. Uh, but there's also been a crackdown on trying to limit the, the scope and availability of the resources to make homemade weapons. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the guns are very rare here. Uh, uh, the, these weapons appear to be uh, made at home and so uh, the government has uh, gone about educating pharmacists and pharmacies to be uh, on the lookout for any bulk orders of products which could be potentially uh, used to make homemade explosives or homemade weapons, uh, limiting uh, online sales of things that could potentially be made, uh, used to be uh, to make gunpowder. Uh, these are the kind of things that have been done in the last nine months. There was a lot of scrutiny uh, on the police and on security response uh, and, and I guess what some people perceive to be a failure to protect former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. So it's going to be inter interesting to see what the police have to say about their security today and how they responded. Live from Tokyo, Japan, our correspondent Chris Gilbert, thank you very much. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.